G'day there, welcome to the race side. My name is Hannah and welcome to the Andor Premiere Countdown. We are here. We've made it. The many, many months and weeks, even with a pushback of the schedule, we are finally here. We are mere two hours away and hopefully less to the premiere of Andor. It's going to be so exciting. Thank you so much for joining today. We have lots on the agenda to keep you awake uh, ready for the episodes to drop very, very soon. Uh, we've got trivia coming up. We're going to make some cocktails. There's going to be some discussions. It's going to be a great time. So make sure you're uh, chatting with us, chatting with us live in the live chat. Uh, let me know uh, where, you, where you're watching from, uh, maybe what, what you're snacking on as well, getting ready for the premiere. But uh, this is very exciting. I have been just so excited all day. The energy has been oozing out of me. I, I've been just preparing for this moment for so long. So, so it is so good to in, enjoy it all with you here today. We've got two hours of goodness coming up. Uh, so, yeah, let's. We're going to jump straight into it because we've got a big agenda today. Uh, so, today we're going to be doing some mental trivia to obviously test our minds and brains of what, how much do we know Cassian Andor and the broader Rogue One or the Empire uh, time. So to help test our memories, we need some trivia contestants. And, of course, these are a couple of familiar faces, but also some a new face with us today. We have Joel, we have Matthew, and we have Anna joining us for trivia. Welcome, guys. Welcome. <laughs> Woo! 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 Thanks for having us on. I I'm looking forward to yes. talking all about this uh, new Star Trek show about this ice planet. Help found yeah. the Federation. I know it's. Uh, <laughs> it's I, I thought. Yeah, this, you mean this is not the rise out? of Goldie Cot, the biography by Yo Tot? <laughs> I love it. I if love I have it, to uh, do, do I ruin the joke by having to explain it? Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on today, guys. Uh, Matthew and Joel, you both were on my stream yesterday. Uh, of course, if you don't know them, these guys are from the Ion Cannon podcast. And uh, Anna, this is this is your first time on the race side, but also you're my third guest. You're my third <gasps> official guest on the show. So what a privilege it is to have you here. But uh, do you want to plug an honor. your podcast <laughs> and where you're from for people uh, to see where you're at too? Yeah, so uh, I'm Anna. I am part of the one of the newer podcasts on Star Wars Underworld Network. Uh, we're called yes. Tales from Beyond the Galaxy. So we talk about the Star War and then other <laughs> tales beyond the galaxy. Uh, oh, so we're oh, right now oh. talking about uh, House of the Dragon right now because we're deep into that. Um, we, uh, we live stream on Wednesday nights, Wednesday um, night. yes. and what, Wednesday nights at 7.30 central, 8.30, oh, here we go, my time zone testing. Yeah, again. you gotta, you gotta <laughs> calculate all the different zones now. <laughs> 8.30 eastern time, uh, mountain time is 6.30 and then 5.30 Pacific time. Pacific, and then uh, Wednesday Yes, Wednesday nights. Um, and all of us are based in Houston, in Texas. Amazing. What a great group. Uh, and also over there, you can see my ex co host. I, I, ex sounds like I'm mad. Me and Jordan go way back. We're good friends still. <laughs> but my old co host, Jordan, is over there uh, as well. It's always a good time. So, Tales Beyond the Galaxy. Was it, is that it? Yeah, Tales Beyond the Galaxy. No. Yeah, Tales from Beyond the Galaxy, yeah. something like that. Beyond the, yeah, there we go. Nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> uh, but uh, today, it's so good to have you guys on because today I'm testing all of your and or knowledge. Now, you at home watching along can test these as well. We're going to have the questions all up on the screen as well uh, for you to, to see how well you know Cassian Andor and the broader kind of Empire Rebellion time. Uh, so what, how we're going to do this is a question is going to pop up on the screen. I'll give you about 60 seconds or so to have a think. Uh, write down your answers um, and then we'll reveal the answer one by one as we go through. So notebooks are ready. Ooh, Star Wars I'm, notebooks even. That's extra I'm points. I'm going to use a Google Doc for mine. Just <laughs> I got, that's even I better. Have. I love that. 
And you, wow, you've got so many different versions of notebooks here. I love it. See, I love see it. I'm old, so I got a, a show from a Paper Notebook, first of all. Paper Here's Notebook. Yeah, that's old. <laughs> you know what's sad? I, I actually have school supplies with me. Like from my <laughs> class, yet I don't have any with me. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Google Doc, tablet, paper. We got we got all the different uh, ways. But uh, let's get to it. Let's jump straight into this trivia. I want to see how much you guys know. Uh, so, with our very first question, let's give it a whirl. Starting with Dantooine and Mantooine. These planets neighbor Cassian's homeworld of blank. So, what is the name of Cassian's <laughs> homeworld? Where was he born? Where I'm, I'm blanking on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. But have a think. His home uh, world. I wrote it down. So, so oh, yeah, that's right. I was meant to say, don't blurt it out if you if you think of it. Uh, write it down, write it down, and think of it. Give you another twenty seconds to mull over some words. You at home, if you if you know the answer, please refrain from saying it in the comments. First of all, uh, but let us know if you got it right when we share the answer. Okay, answers thought of answers locked in. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the answer to this first question, the name of Cassian's homeworld is the planet Fist. What a, an odd, <laughs> odd name, odd name for it. But uh, did, I how, got how the number of letters that? right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go around. Joel, did you get that one? Yep. Yep, yep. amazing. Matt, I want to know your full, full letter planet you had, Matt. Uh, it's it's not even close. <laughs> I just made up something that kind of sounded know. right, but not at all. Did you uh, make it a ween, like a a clack queen, or no, a... <laughs> no? It was four letters. I think I was thinking of like like Curzon or something with sort of like oh Kern. yeah, like a C. Uh, I don't Curzon know. Dax is from Star Trek. Yeah, Matthew, what? You know what? This. <laughs> Again, we're stuck in the Star Trek. But so is Andor. Andor. No, okay. I don't want that joke. Uh, oh, I love it. Yeah, and, I, and Anna, I no what? what what did you get for that one, Anna? I did not remember, so I just put straight face. <laughs> oh, no, I don't remember. Straight face. <laughs> oh, no. I love it. I love it. Oh, phenomenal. All right, well, let's keep rolling on. Question two. And each of these questions, like, some are hard, some are, some are a little bit easier, so we'll see how we go. But question number two. This is a, I feel like this is a hard one. But question number two, Cassian was recruited into the rebellion by a general of the rebel alliance that we see in Rogue One. Who was this general to recruit Cassian Andor? So he was in the movie, only briefly, only a bit. Uh, and I, I will say he's a bit of a cranky one. He's a bit of a cranky guy to me. <laughs> I'm but glad he... I watched Rogue One just today and yeah. the day before. <laughs> I watched it the other day. <laughs> He's no, I, I will if, say if you could even get his last name, if you could get his yeah. last name, I'll give you that. Even I will say I, you so, don't often hear first names. Uh, this depends on the answer to this, depends on whether or not that clip that we saw, uh, you know, on Disney Plus and also in, in IMAX Ooh, is not him being recruited to the Rebel Alliance, but Ooh. um, this might be reckoned, yeah, might be some reckoned for what we know right <laughs> now. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, um, I'll give you another, another 10 seconds. Have a think. But think, if we're going with of, the movie answer, then I know the answer. Just go for a rebellion-esque name <laughs> if, you, if you don't think you know it. <laughs> have a stab. Have a stab at it. Oh, I love it. We've got some awesome comments coming in here. You <laughs> are coming in. I probably should look at the comments because I don't want to Yeah. Also, I okay. actually, everyone's being very polite and not saying yeah. the answers, so I, okay, I do appreciate okay. that. That's good. Thank you, common people. If, if you want to tell me the answers, uh, <laughs> DM me uh, on Twitter and the G40. No, I'm, just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. By the way, yes, Diego Luna is from Mexico. Uh, I'll throw that out. <laughs> For some reason, I thought he was from Chile, that. but then I remembered nope. that's Pablo. Pablo is from Chile. Pablo is from Winnipeg, <gasps> Manitoba, guys. When his family's from Chile. So. Yes, his family's from Chile. But uh, Boy, home it. of the Human Rights Museum and the Winnipeg Jets. And, there you uh, go, the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for the answer? Are we ready? Yes. Yes? 
Okay, let's yeah. do it. So the answer is, I'm going to try and nail his pronunciation. David Straven, which is he's kind uh, of that kind of middle I, age, spelled, kind of staunchy guy. I spelled it wrong. I spelled it Dravis. 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 That, I, I would go like close enough, the names. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close. That's like both the first name and last name together. Dravis. Yeah. No. David Straven. But I have a fun fact for you. I have a fun fact. Oh, yes. He, I love a fun fact. He has a great arc oh, nice. in the Star Wars mainline comics by. Not, great, Charles not great no, 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 no. Or, yeah, the guy uh, before, after Jason, Jason Aaron, who did it after Jason Aaron, he did the first major comic. Uh, Karen Gillen. Yeah, Gillen. Gillen yeah, Karen did. Gillen. Um, Gillen had abused him, and he killed him off. Killed off Draven in that comic called oh, wow. After the Jedi when they're over Jedi. So yes. pretty much a oh unofficial sequel to Rogue One, where Luke named Rogue Squadron after the Rogue yeah. One team. So that, that was cool. He cool. dies by Vader, General Raven. Jeez, yeah. So that's, that's vicious. That you moment, by the way, you. wow. That that is a pretty cool moment. I mean, we knew it was coming because we know they've retcon you know, Rogue okay. Squadron is named after Rogue One. But the moment, it's similar, right? Luke defies orders to get the job done just the way Jin does. So hence Rogue Squadron. Go. Yeah. It's a mirror. Um, it's the Gillen Star Wars run. It's really good. Yes. Anything by Karen Gillen. Yeah. He's yeah. a bit grumpy. Yeah. That's true. Um, he is quite gr- grumpy. So so who got that one for Draven? Did we all uh Matthew, yeah. did you get that one? Yeah. Yeah. I Joel got wrong. that one. Anna, how'd you go? No. Uh, I wanna <laughs> know your guess though. I wanna know what you said. <laughs> I I am totally like blanked out today. Uh but I put not Bail Organa. <laughs> <laughs> Bail Organa. I know, you know. give that a point. That's good. Process now, of the elimination. I love it. <laughs> he, here's an interesting thing, though, about the thing I said before about how the question depends on what we see. Maybe, maybe in in two hours, or maybe not. But uh, like General Draven, uh, I forget who his actor is, and uh, Stellan Skarsgård's character. Like the two actors are so familiar. I'm so I'm almost surprised that they didn't just bother bringing General Draven. And yes, unnamed yeah, rebel rebellion officer is also good. Maybe <laughs> Hannah, I have a I have a question. I have a question for your question. Yes. Where did you yes. get the information that Draven recruited Andor from exactly? Where does that come I, from? I got I got it from Wikipedia. Well, that, okay. That's right. So I I have a bit of a theory, a bit of a kind of a. Kind of the thing, and imagine I go over this all the time. We talk about the canon hierarchy. I gotta. I wonder if that's a visual dictionary thing, because yeah. I got a feeling. I'm not saying Tony Gilroy is like gonna sweep over the visual dictionary, but I feel like the visual dictionaries and most of the kind of source book stuff normally take the back seat for story material. And I'm always, yeah, at least in my absolutely. personal policy, mm-hmm. I'm more okay with source book material. Being overwritten by story material. It's when other story material mm. writes over story material. Like, we're not getting a little more funky that. But for the most part, source books and, you know, visual dictionaries probably going to get a little bit overwritten in the movie loop. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, for now, discussion. I'll say, you know, for now, yeah, the, that, that is the right answer. Uh, uh, Usually, the the author of those source books, Winnipeg Manitobia's uh, Pablo Hidalgo, he, he usually he doesn't care either. He doesn't mind either. He's happy for yeah. his stuff to he's, get. Yeah, he's he's doing you know. his thing. Doing uh, his except thing. for like certain, something about Poe Dameron's past, but that's another story. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> well, let's keep it rolling on here. Let's jump yeah. into question three again. I feel like I'm starting off with all the hard ones. It, there are easy ones. I promise. I promise. <laughs> there's easy ones. But uh, question number three. Mon Mothma plays a pivotal role in the leadership of the Rebel Alliance, and she got this experience from the Senate. What planet was Mon Mothma the senator for? We saw a lot of her in the Clone Wars, and she was a senator back then, along with Bale and, and Padme. But, uh, yeah, what was Mon Mothma's planet that she was the senator for? I'll give you 30, 20, 20, 30 seconds. Think of this one. Uh, with this question, to be honest, I actually didn't know this answer. Once oh. we get to it, I, I didn't actually know this just from my usual knowledge. Learn something new every up. day. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I, I learned so much doing this, writing this up. Lockie's got the it. That's Amazing. <laughs> Finally, on, on screen. One. Yes. 
The yes. answer is not New South Wales. All right. What? <laughs> More text. All right. All right. We've all got lo- answers locked in. <laughs> okay. We're all good. Yes. The answer is Chandrilla, which, yes, uh, yeah, totally did not know that one. Totally did what? not know that one. Uh, Joel, did you get that one? Yep. Got it. Yep. And Matthew? Is it 1L or 2? It's 1L. That's okay. Oh, that's a good question. I, you think it's I put 1L. <laughs> I put 1L. I love that. Yeah, you I put 1L. Put one. And Anna yeah. got 1. Amazing. Okay, good. Good. We got that's... everyone got one there. Amazing. So, so good. Well, let's roll on to the fourth one, which is another Mon Mothma question. So, Mon Mothma's incredible leadership and political knowledge was successful even after the fall of the empire. What role did Mon Mothma take in the new republic? Should have capitalized that republic there. Oh, I see. What role? And I'm sure there's, I'm sure maybe like Joel might have some deep cut of like she had this other role that wasn't as famous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just, just the, the main thing, the main okay. thing. She <laughs> took a certain role after the fall of the empire. Yeah. That'd be cool to see Changilla. Actually, yeah, I don't think we've ever seen Changilla on mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was. Actually, yeah, was I think we, we did go into this. Uh, and we've been yeah. into, the, on, into this on Iron Cannon, but and yeah, I think on, on your I, I thought that yesterday. I was like, oh, this is a trivia question. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what role did Mon Mothma take in the New Republic? You know what? I'm going to, instead of telling you the answer straight away, I maybe you guys should tell me your answers. Yeah. Uh, Anna, I want to okay. throw it to I'll, you. I'll go first. What, I'll go first. What? what I, I want Anna to go first. And then, I feel like I'm confident that, Joel, you know it. Anna, what did you I'm put down? Guessing she was possibly the chancellor, but I also put she was a bad B. <laughs> <laughs> Even what? more that's correct. Like a, that's a double that's point. Correct. That's a double point answer. I love it. I love it. I, I, I give that two uh, points. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Matthew Joel, what yeah. do we think? So interestingly, yeah. even before the Empire Falls. Uh, they treat her. This is what we went into uh, yesterday. They, the, the, in the organization of the Rebel Alliance, they, they say the Chancellor of the Republic in exile. And so yeah. once they're actually able to set up the capital on Chandrilla, um, you know, and you know, after Chandrilla Starlines is able to do its thing, <laughs> I'm pointing that out there. Yeah, uh, yeah, she's she's the Chancellor of an, and, and there's a new Chancellor. Senate and all that. I have my deep cut. Time for my deep cut. Yes, in legend, her title mm-hmm. was Chief of State, which is pretty much the same thing, <laughs> except it's fancy your title. Sure. There that, you go. I feel like the prequel yeah, didn't that, that, exist that, back that then, and they didn't have a they didn't have that <laughs> title chancellor, which mm-hmm. either a non a non corrupt chancellor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm here for that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, chancellor. question number five. We're doing well, guys. You're doing well. We're cranking through it. Uh, number five into some Saw Gerrera stuff. So Saw Gerrera was an Ooh. extremist example of the rebellion and led others to, to this violent acts for good. What was the military group that he led called? So what know was his little world gang? Know your World War II history, people. Know yep. your World War II history. Uh, I'm, I'm going to quibble with this whole violent acts for good. Is that is that morally possible? <laughs> that's, well, that's the point. That's the point. <laughs> that uh, is we, the point. <laughs> we'll ponder that question for many yep. years, I believe. <laughs> Yeah. And especially for the next 12 weeks. Well, yes. no, nine weeks. Nine yeah. Weeks in the first three weeks. But you mean every time Saws popped up, right? It's... Right? Yeah. They're just, they're very angry people. <laughs> gang. You know, they're just, well, you he's, know, in Rogue One, he's, he's full on, I mean, diagnosable that's... paranoia, I think. You know? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's cool. Lies, man. deception. He don't, I don't, I like, Jins come to I kill like him, you little... know. Journey. Don't blame him though. He's probably been through no. a lot of stuff. He's been through everything. That's true. Yeah. He's a therapist. But, but, yeah, guy needs help. Guy needs help. He needs a hug. He needs, needs a, a hug. hug. There's so many Star Wars car- characters that always just they seem like they need a hug. Like <laughs> Darth Maul, he seems like he needs a hug. Except <laughs> the Emperor. He doesn't need a hug. Except yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like he doesn't. Um, Emperor, I think the Emperor's hat loves himself and loves his evil too much. Yeah, he, he's fine. <laughs> okay, so. Answer for this one. What was the military group uh, that Saw Guerrero led? What were they called? Uh, Matthew, I'm going to throw it to you first. 
the partisans. The partisans. Anna, what did you get? Uh, oh. Yeah, I put, I almost put like something gorilla and then I remembered, oh, partisans. Yeah. Yes. Joel, did you get that one? Partisans, yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, the World partisans. I love it. His, uh, his last oh, name yeah. is. How about that? Say, and his last name is, of course, Guerrera. Guerrera. Yeah. Guerrera. Very I warlike, if you know your know. French. I love Star Wars names, but they always Partisan. take something like famous and like change like one letter. So yeah. But like, I do. Well, you did not like that. Spelled a bit differently. The parties. <laughs> parties. <laughs> <laughs> a party. The parties. That's right. Oh, I love it. How we do it? How we yeah. do it in the chat? How's everyone doing yeah, with the questions? Yeah, Omar, that happens, eh? I know, I've been there. <laughs> We've all done, <laughs> done terrible. Things, I don't know about you. I've only been uh, morally immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> partisan yeah. cheese? Ah, oh, yes, the partisan <laughs> cheese. Oh, I love uh-huh. that's clever. That's cool. The Empire. Oh, there you go. I didn't. I didn't notice this. It's pretty cool. The partisan yeah. logo. It's a little yeah. rebellion. It, I guess it, was, it leads Actually, to it. I mean, I don't there's... think I've seen it. To be honest. Yeah. I mean, there's there's the Sabine. Uh, oh yeah, Phoenix. that kind of. But yeah, yeah I guess, I I guess they're kind of come together. I mean, the, in Andor, that logo, uh, the official, uh, the official marketing, that is, I guess, maybe closer to the partisan logo. I think. There you go. I don't yeah. know. It's it's yeah. getting there too. Rick Austin, yeah. Che Guevara, Blur and some great, lines. great spot. Yeah, blurred some lines. Mm-hmm. Thai guy, you have got to end. That's okay. Hopefully, there's some easy it's ones coming good, up. I did. Guy. I did these like tricky ones. That's okay. Th- th- this is a mere fun. This is a game. No, no judgment. Uh, if you haven't yeah, gotten any entirely. yet. Uh, <laughs> let, let's let's roll into number question number six. Uh, question. Here we go. In Rogue One, Cassian met up with one of Saw Gerrera's partisans and killed him to ensure secrecy of the information. Oh. What was oh, the dang. name? This is a hard one. This is a really tricky one. What was the name of the rebel ally Cassian killed? So remember that scene near the start? Yeah. He like, yeah. He's like, it's okay. Calm down. And he's like, Poof. kills him. So what was that guy's name? I don't, I'm not actually sure if he says the name in that exchange there. I think maybe, I think maybe he says it once. So this is another uh, <laughs> uh, making of guidebook, whatever it's called. Yeah. This is a deep uh, behind deep whatever Wikipedia. those are called. The Pablo Hidalgo, Hidalgo, Winnipeg Pablo yeah. Hidalgo. Yeah, I should I should have uh, told you all to read up on your Wikipedia before you yeah. did the trivia. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so he, he had like a broken movie. arm. Yes. There you go. Okay, so have a crack. Even just just think up a, a rebellion esque name. Actually, just think of a normal <laughs> name and change one letter, and that's probably <laughs> the guy's name. <laughs> but the name of uh, it, actually, everyone got the an- answer. Got the answers locked in in the head. Yeah, I locked you think in so. A answer. Let's let's give it a, a go. I, I might show you this answer straight up. I won't ask you. So the answer to this one, what was the name of the rebel ally Cassian killed? His name was Tivik. Yes, okay. that does ring a bell. Tivik. Yeah, that does ring not a ring a bell, bell to me. Ring a bell? It does ring a bell. It does ring a bell. Nope. I couldn't. I couldn't find the last name. So well, I know my answer. One name you know what I put for my answer? Yeah, I want to know what, what, what your answers were. <laughs> I put not Pablo Hidalgo. Pablo Hidalgo. <laughs> exactly like Pablo Hidalgo. Yeah. yeah. So that to me, oh, so I, oh, I just identified like, oh, that's not Pablo. <laughs> okay, <it's> like, oh. <laughs> that's so go. good. So... What, what else did you guys get? I put Jeff originally, and then you said, think of a normal name, <laughs> except change the letter. So I named him Beth. <laughs> Beth. Beth. One. You know R. what? R. That's R. actually R. such, R. that R. is R. such a Star Wars name, even so. <laughs> Beth. Oh, yeah. Beth. Okay. Rebel. <laughs> I lie. Okay. I love it. Peace, I love my dude. It. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, uh, what did you get for that one? So I, I the only thing I could think of was was... A guy who does join Rogue One, the the squad on uh, Scarif, Melchi, but Melchi. that's the wrong guy. That's a cool, <laughs> no. that's a cool name. I like it is that a cool name. name. He, I think he's he's one of the guys who is part of leads leads the 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 ones that plant all the bombs to distract all the troopers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, Maybe his sidekick was Biff. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, we're just gonna right we're just gonna rename. I just him that's that. gonna be the name of like every unnamed yes. character. In it's Star Wars it's the now. new Gloop Shooto. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's roll on to uh, number seven. Let me write down my scores here. Uh, number seven. Here we go. Another with the same scene we're talking about here. Uh, in Rogue One, Cassian met the rebel ally to receive the important information about the Empire building a super weapon. Where did they meet? So it's the same scene, the, the same time where they, they met up and he met this guy and then he like he like oh. he's like, Hey, did you get the thing? And he's like, Yeah, they're building a Death Star, and then Cassian shoots them and runs away. Where was that? Where was it? Now they're building I will give you a, a hint. Star. <laughs> what? I I will give you a, a hint that it it isn't a planet. It isn't a planet. That's my hint for you. I think I so, spelled have a it wrong, but that. I know I would, but I know how you pronounce it. <laughs> that's that's like the opposite. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I could spell it from Wikipedia. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the way we think to pronounce it. We're used to. I guess. But I'm used to pronouncing. Heard it. Heard yeah, have I've a heard think. It where did they meet? And I, I liked in Rogue One how they always put like the title of the planet of where they were going. Mm-hmm. That was cool. I always enjoyed that. Oh, so yeah. that this did yeah. come up in the movie. The one in the yeah. little left hand corner. I watched Rogue One today. Name. I watched Rogue One today. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so it's fresh in your mind. Ah. All right. The yeah, answer for this title. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the answer for this one. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this one on the screen again. The answer. Okay. Where did they meet? They met on the ring of Kafrin? Kafrin. 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 Let us know if you got that one in the comments. That's okay. I spelling spelling schmelling. That's all good as long as you got the thought of it. Uh Mm -hmm. Anna, what did you get for that one? I remembered every place except for this one. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So I just put not Jenna. I should. I, the next question I should put is like name every other location in every other <laughs> Mustafar. Um, Ringer Graffin is a really cool, cool design, right? The, it's I the one with yeah, the, the, the really two cool. upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I want to see that again. Like I want to see more of those. Thing? Like a yeah. yeah, and like the gravity really cool. and all that. I, yeah, that that in the um, the Mandalorian episode in the Book of Boba Fett, they don't go there, but it's a similar. <laughs> Uh, yeah. kind of uh, feel, kind of deal with the stations. I, mm, I noticed yeah. I noticed Omar's answer. Um, he is right, though. That is a place in Rogue One. I yeah. know what happens there. That's yes. where, where that, yeah, what, what, is. Wabani is... Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Wabani. That was a cool, that was a cool destination. Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic. Well, what, what was that? Number seven? I'm, yeah. I've yeah. lost my place here. That was seven. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Actually, who, who got that one? Who got one? Joel, did you get that one? Right. Yes, uh, Matthew, did you get that one? Yeah. And I got every other destination ever in Star Wars, but that one. <laughs> Process of elimination. <laughs> yeah. I love it though. I love it. You're doing amazing. Okay, let's <laughs> let's crack yeah. on. So number seven. Number eight. Uh, no, number eight. Sorry. <laughs> Another Rogue One esque question here. In Rogue One, as Chirrut and Baze first meet Cassian, Chirrut asks uh, asks Baze, does he does he look like a killer? And Baze responds with a, no, he has the face of a, what does he have the face of? What does Cassian have the face of? Because obviously Chirrut can't see it, but uh, so Baze has to explain it, describe it. But what is he have a face of? Who does he have the face Do we of? want the exact quote or the gist? Or? Um, just, just the, like the word, the, the word he's got there, the face of a blank. Face of a bantha. It's not that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Give you a couple of seconds here. Churden Bays. What a great duo they were. Love them. Mm-hmm. They're, they're good characters. I want like a buddy comedy episode mm-hmm. or something <laughs> of just them two. <laughs> that you know awesome. what I want <laughs> is a whole era of Star Wars storytelling that goes back to Jeddah and looks at uh, the Guardians of the Wills and all the different religions there. Call it High Republic Phase 2. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, that's cool. they've, they've gone back to Jeddah and we're going to see Jeddah at its height. And it's, I'm excited for that. So, But there's also yeah, uh, cool. a Guardians of the Wills kind of young reader book that I haven't read. 
that I should read. But yeah, I, think I do have my eye on Canon, guys. I'm telling you. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get in our answers for this one. Are we all finished? Anna, it looks like you're making an artwork over there. I hope it's an artwork. <laughs> 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 All right. A, She's drawing his answer. face. <laughs> 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 he has the face of a this. Oh, just, just, a portrait, just a perfect portrait. Oh, yeah. I love it. So the answer for this one. Number eight. Uh, what does he describe? No, he has the face of a friend. Cassian has the face of a friend, according to Bayes. Actually, I was about to say Chirrut. According to Bayes, face of Wait. a friend. So it's one thirty here. So maybe my brain is kind of foggy. Where are we talking about? Are we talking about in Saw's prison, so, like complex, or are we talking is, about uh, on uh, on Edu? On Edu, on Edu here, the chat. Really, he has the face of a yeah. friend. Yeah, he goes. Yeah, which I think is a quite. It's I'm... quite a big thing for Baze to say, but sure, it is like yeah. Yeah, because he's about to go like kill Galen essentially yeah. in Thor, and that's why he's like, "Is he got a face of a killer?" And then Baze is like, "No, he's got a face of a friend." It's like oh, interesting. That's, that's nice. That's I nice. mean, the line I always remember is, "The dark side moves, the force moves darkly on uh, around someone's about to kill." That's I mean, oh, that's yeah. the line that's I always remember. Yeah, so. yeah, because that I think it's so. like that's like the next line or something, or or the yeah. one before it, and it's like, that's a great line. Yeah. I thought that too. So. That's why that was my answer, not friend. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, Anna, <laughs> what did you get for that one? <laughs> Have you seen Diego Luna? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's great. That, you know what? I, again, I feel like you're getting, you're getting so many like extra points yeah. here for these like brilliant <laughs> answers. That's amazing. Joel, and then in parentheses one? above H, I did put Patty. <laughs> oh, yes. Of course. Are you an, an angel? angel? Are you an angel? <laughs> oh, amazing. I mean, Natalie amazing. Portman own, co-owns a team called Angel City. So just put that up there. <laughs> oh, Angels of Diego sense. City. Makes sense then. Uh, Joel, did you get that one? Face no, I didn't get that one. No. Didn't get that one. That's all good. Let's roll on. We've got two more questions to go. Woo, this has gone so quickly. All right. Now, this this again, I've gone to Wikipedia for this one. And if you if you're not getting the questions right, that's okay. This is means it's going into your brain of information for when we're about to watch Endor. So you know all this inf extra information now for when we're about to see it. So this next mm -hmm. question, deep cut, not in the movies, not anywhere, just seeing if anyone might know this. Oh. Question. Oh, I, do, I do not know. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, just think of a rebellion esque name. That's probably it. I'm getting one more Star Trek joke in here for this. Just, on this, just warning you guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, so Cassian Endor has a middle name. What is it? Let's give it a go. Uh, actually, let's go around again. Hear your answers. Uh, mm -hmm. Anna, what did you put down for this? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome! That's brilliant. brilliant, brilliant. That I feel like it's going to be like something now. very like normal <laughs> like 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 almost almost matthew okay. what did you get for this one cassian tiberius and or <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a star trek joke guys. star <laughs> trek very good hey. joel what did you get for this one i didn't think of anything i couldn't think of anything i think of anything, anything? Joke answer to nope his oh, his uh... middle name is geron or geron <laughs> Jared. Cassian Jaron Andor. You you'll, you'll see it differently now. Every time you see him, you'll be like, Jaron, really? Jaron, is that you? That's what, he, that's what he's called when he's in trouble. Cassian Jaron Andor. That's enough piloting for today. Beth. I love it. I love it. <laughs> There's, there we go. There's the real yeah. answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Fred. Oh, I love it. 
Fred, <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. Wow, you guys are coming up with classics. <laughs> well, this is I like this one, The Destroyer. Oh wow. Yep. It's amazing. Well, All right. Final question. Final question. This went fast. <coughs> excuse me. This cold is still holding on to me. So th please mm. excuse these coughs. Uh, question number 10. Let's do it. Number 10. Working for the Rebels, made a lot of secret missions. What were one of the aliases or codenames Cassian went under? Mm. So obviously you need to do stuff in secrecy. You have to have some sort of a code name or cover name. What? The, there's actually quite a few options here. I will tell you that. There's actually a few. There's mm. one really famous one that we know about with code names for the Rebellion. But there's also some other kind of normal names that he kind of went by as well. What was his code name? Again, if you don't know these answers, this is just knowledge going into you for watching the show live. Mm -hmm. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> Alrighty. This is amazing. You've all done so well. This is and we're gonna have a, a score reveal at the end as well. <clears throat> <clears throat> Alrighty. Last this was the last question. So what was his code name? Anna again. I feel like yeah, this is a you you paint a whole <laughs> portrait. She's just drawing a whole thing. You're making a uh, scribe, <clears throat> a scroll. She's writing all of them out and Mustafar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them, probably best. Possibly best. Yes. Clearly it's so best. Good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Matthew, what did you get for this one? I got Fulcrum. Fulcrum, Fulcrum. amazing. Fulcrum, yeah. yes. Fulcrum. He went... Under Fulcrum, but there was actually some other names that I just thought were really interesting. Jura Willix Sword, Ark, yeah. Ark, H, Arch. I didn't even know Arch. how to start. Octo, but not quite. Or maybe like <laughs> someone was like in the middle of a sneeze. Ah, and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then Jorath Jura Sword. But of course, that Fulcrum... sounds like a Jedi in Legends. I mean, it's not Jorah Sabal. It's but. actually that sounds like a High Republic Jedi. That sounds yeah. Super cool. <laughs> I think that needs to be a thing. I think they need I to think do that. So. I don't know. Well, if let, me, let me let me tell you up here. Let me tell you up what we've got All here. Right. Okay. Do, All right, do, Joel, do, do, got yours. Do, do, do. All right, Matthew, got yours. Amazing! Wow, this was how interesting. Very very close. Mm -hmm. Round of trivia. We're going to start with a sip. <laughs> and then, yes. so, Anna, you got, actually, no, I'm going to go with Matt first. Oh, no. Oh, no. Matt, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, you got six out of ten. Yeah, that's fair. Anna, you got five out of ten. But Joel, you got seven out of ten, nice. which means Joel is our winner for the Andor trivia. Very good. Wow. I, I did I make those challenging? Were they hard? Did you guys find those hard? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. so. I was but it was a good di was good difficulty throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first one. Yeah, and again, if you didn't know it, it's like hopefully it connects to something in the mm -hmm. show. Now Joel's prize on. sorry, you're saying yes, Joel's sorry. prize is that he gets to live in a time zone where it isn't almost two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's afterwards that I had to worry about yeah, or, or it's not even midnight yet. <laughs> oh I love it. I love it. Now before mm. we start to wrap up here for our trivia segment uh, well, I want to just do a quick round table of what you guys are most excited for about mm -hmm. Andor, because obviously this is a hype show. We're counting down. It's about to come. It's, yeah. it's, it's like an hour and 18 minutes away. My goodness. So let's go around the table. Uh, Anna, I'll throw it to you first. Or should I call you Beth? Beth, <laughs> Beth whatever. What we'll go we'll excited Beth for? for the hype Beth. of the show. Right? <laughs> um, I'm really, well, just in 
general, just the whole show, just having more live action Star Wars, um, Mm -hmm. of course. Uh, And then one of my favorites, Mon Mothma. I'm excited to see her again. And then just getting more into the politicals. Yeah. The Star Wars politicals yeah, yeah. of yeah, things. Yeah, politics. <laughs> um, yeah, those are my my top two. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mama Moth. I feel like yeah, I feel like there's like Papa Palps and then we've got Mama Moth as well coming in. Mama, <laughs> Mama Mon? Moth. Mama Mon oh Mama Moth. That's that's a bit of a tongue twister actually. <laughs> Mama Moth, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I kept on seeing a bunch of people talk about Mothman earlier on Right, my Twitter on, feed, on Twitter? and it just was oh. like, <laughs> get through. Well, the like, what is that? A DC thing? What is I, that? I, I, I honestly <clears throat> don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just keep thinking saw he was things, and then I just keep on thinking they're talking about Mon Mothma. I'm like, yeah, I'm stoked, Mon Mothma. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Mothman. Who the hell is Mothman? <laughs> like what? Yeah. Oh, oh that, that's that would so be good. a good like Halloween. Um, yeah. Uh, costume is or celebration, even Mon Mothman. Mon Mothman, yep. there we so go. Get on it, so <laughs> get on that. Copyright, <laughs> Beth. <laughs> Copyright, Beth for that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, yeah, uh, Matthew, you two, uh, give yeah. us, yeah, 60 second summary of what you're most excited for for Andor. <clears throat> I mean, Anna already said it, I mean, Mon Mothma using the Senate to do as much good as she can this or in spite of the Senate. Uh, but, you know, even, even uh, like you're joking about yesterday, you know, just debates over legislation and seeing <laughs> Beth just, sorry. That's, sorry. That's, uh, that's really that good. Is brilliant. That is brilliant. Um, <laughs> debates over legislation and, and just the machinations of the institution and how, how, it can be a, useful for change, but then ultimately in that context, uh, entirely corrupt. And then, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, Tony Leroy reaching beyond the screen and just slapping us in the face with both the plate, so plate of refugees and, and displaced people and also uh, the lack of any kind of, uh, you know, cherished approach to Star Wars and looking yeah. forward to what he brings from a very fresh perspective. Absolutely, absolutely. A bit of fresh perspective. And it definitely seems like Tony Gilroy is bringing that. Uh, Joel, <laughs> what are you most excited for, for Andor? I'm looking forward to see how, you know, how a rebellion gets organized in the galaxy. Like, how do you uh, get all these disparate forces together uh, mm. and bring, you know, a single rebel force? <laughs> kind of, the formation of the rebellion is coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's one of the beautiful things of Star Wars is often when it's like a ragtag group kind of bent together, uh, you know, building hope. I think it's something we can all kind of, uh, you know, fond of and connecting. And that's, that's why we're here today doing this trivia to connect, to share our love of Andor, just like the Rebels. Uh, they, they've got a bit more of a pressure, though. They, they're trying to overcome the Empire. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Little we're, ban- we're banding together to, to support them do it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, that is it for our trivia. So we'll, we'll do some quick plugs because uh, Joel and Matthew, you guys have the Ion Cannon which is all paper cannon fa- focused stuff, but also any kind of cannon as well. Uh, you guys have a great focus on lore and Star Wars uh, stuff over there. Do you want to uh, do you want to quickly plug where people can find you? Go for it, Joel. Oh yeah, uh, you can find us at the Ion Cannon, Ion Cannon on the Star Wars <clears throat> Underworld Network. Uh, we're not. You don't have our Twitter. Uh, yeah, I have it. Yeah, you, Matthew put his Twitter. I put my own personal Twitter. Um, <laughs> you can find me at GID twenty twenty one where I tweet stuff, but mostly you can find it where Matthew's Twitter is at Ion Cannon Pod where we uh, always give you updates about all the good stuff. Yeah, and, and just to, to jump in there, uh, yeah, so Iron Cannon Pod Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I got to do more on the Instagram, but I'll say that. Uh, also, for Thursdays or Fridays, if you're interested in comic books, uh, as part of the Iron Cannon feed on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, I do my, my weekly comic book reviews, just sharing eh, about a five, ten-minute thoughts on that, looking forward to uh, tomorrow, along with Andor, 
uh, Toronto's Megan Wong making her return to Star Wars with uh, Hyperspace Stories number two. Just want to plug that out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my personal Twitter, NEUG45, mostly going to talk about uh, soccer and Star Trek and who knows what else. But uh, yeah, <laughs> a little it. bit of Star Wars in there. And, and my personal Instagram, MNEUG1138. There you go. Fantastic. And uh, Beth or Anna, uh, <laughs> where can people find you on social media and also your podcast, your show? So <clears throat> Tales from Beyond the Galaxy on Twitter is TF, Tales from B, <laughs> TFBTG pod. Um, and then on Instagram, it's, I put it, down here uh beyond the galaxy pod which is where i do a lot of uh hanging out on there posting stuff um on there and then um we stream on twitch um so it's twitch.tv slash tales from beyond the galaxy and uh we're wednesday night 7 30 central time uh 5 30 uh pacific and then you can find me on all the social media, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, also on Twitch too, but I rarely get on that. Um, Z O M G Anna A N N A L O L Z, um, and you can just find me just complaining about stuff and talking about <laughs> soccer as well. Oh, I love it! We wow, I, I've, we I've, I've, we've got so many soccer fans here. That's amazing. I love it. You so got much. the Venn diagram. Oh. I'm telling you, the Venn yeah. diagram. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, amazing yeah. stuff. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on for some Andor trivia, testing your lot knowledge, and hopefully learning something to go into the show. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably see you guys in the comments shortly after. Make sure, actually, I should have tagged everything in the description. I might do that after we go live. I'll mm-hmm. put it in so uh, people can find your stuff. Uh, but thanks again, guys, for coming on. It's been a pleasure having you here. Yeah. And uh, I'll I'll talk to you guys soon. And enjoy Andor. Oh, my gosh. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Also, it's fun. Everyone enjoy. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. us, honestly. Yeah. Thanks oh, for having us on again. <laughs> it's been an honor. All right. See you later, guys. Com- comment section. Say bye. bye to Anna, Matthew, and Joel. Thank you, guys. Amazing. What a What a bang to start our Andor countdown. Now, what's the time? We've got an hour and 10 to go. Woo! Phenomenal. So we're, we've got so much to go. Still on the show, we have so much to do. So <clears throat> next up, we're going to be making, and I hope you enjoyed this pun. I've worked so hard on this, and I thought it was so clever. We're going to make a Star Wars cocktail. Uh I don't know if uh, over 18s only, I don't know, drink responsibly, but we're going to make a Star Wars cocktail. We're going to make a gin and tonic, but we're going to make it a bit Star Wars-y and we're making a gin and krennic, which is uh, my fantastic plan words to make a a gin and tonic a bit more Star Wars-y. So let me, let me get, I'll start getting all the things set up here. And if you're new to the show, if you're new to the race side, uh, make sure you subscribe, uh, leave a like and uh, let me know how you're enjoying the show. But also, if you if you're new here, you might not know we have something called the called action, the action cam. cam. There we go. Oh, no, it has to mute. mute. There we go. That echo should be gone now. But this is our action cam. This gets all uh, up that nice and close shots of things that we're going to be making. So let's start making our gin and krennic. <coughs> There we go. Very, very precisely organized. I've got all my ingredients here, all my things to make this beverage. Uh, but uh, yeah, action cam is back, guys. Gin as in gin urso. Yeah, and gin as in like alcoholic gin. There you go. Love the pun. Loving it. Thanks so much, guys. Well, I'm going to get start straight into making this. <coughs> Excuse me, this cough is cracking. Uh, I'm going to get started into making this uh, and let me know some thoughts of what you're most excited for about Endor. I just asked uh, the fantastic Anna, um, Joel and Matthew what their thoughts were, but you start to tell me what your favorite um, things about Endor are going to be or most excited for about Endor. Uh, I'll kind of walk you through the process of how I'm making this as well as we go. 
Um, but, you know, there's so many parts. It, it looks like Andor is going to be a show that has a lot of elements, a lot of working stories together. So it's going to be really interesting. Because, <clears throat> I, you know, we have the Mon Mothma stuff and then we also have, obviously, the Andor stuff. But there's so many new characters as well and so many new faces. Really, really interesting. Tales from Beyond the Galaxy. There we go. So that's Anna. So make sure you click on her, uh, well, that um, channel there. That's that's her channel there. There we go. All right. So obviously what we're going to start with, we're going to start with some ice in each of these uh, glasses. I feel like let's just do half-half to make it nice and chilled. Nailed it. Okay, great. Wow, I perfectly portioned that out. Uh, now the first thing we need in this gin and krennic drink is going to be gin, obviously. So a, sh a shot of gin, uh, is going to be two, two tablespoons, I think, or thereabouts, thereabouts. So let's start with that. Uh, Yuan, what have we got for me? Uh, actually getting Mon Mothma back and getting to see the Senate, seeing the beginning of the rebellion is also awesome. Also de definitely manifesting Bail Organa. Absolutely. He's pretty high on my list of like. Uh, cameos I would love to see in this show. Um, which we'll, we'll get into cameos a little later, but that would be a great cameo, Bail Organa. So here we're adding our gin for our gin and krennic. If you're just joining on live, we're making some Star Wars cocktails. But uh, yeah, I think this this period of Star Wars is so fun. It's such a fun time. Um, <clears throat> but uh well, well, I say fun because it's, there's just a lot going on. It's a very chaotic time of, of, of the Star Wars universe, but it's really, really interesting. Uh, Sevilla, the Imperial Senate, absolutely. Hope to, hope to get a decent amount on the Senate, really. And, yeah, I agree with uh, <clears> that. <throat> oh, my, I, I agree with you here. Uh, I think it's going to feel a lot different. I'm trying not to share too much about the, the reviews of it so far, but um, I, I think that's what we might going to be getting. Um, hope to see how the Imperial Senate works. Yeah, so not just see it, but maybe how it's functioning together. Amazing. Hearing the first couple of episodes are slow, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like every show, especially like a new, new show, really has to kind of build up. It really, really builds up. Um, you know, the first couple of episodes always kind of maybe have to be slow to kind of set the scene, set, set what's going on, what's happening. Now, in our gin and krennic, I'm adding, obviously, I've added the gin. That's done now. I'm adding a squeeze of lime because krennic is a sour kind of guy. He is, he is not a happy chappy. So we're adding a squeeze of lime, and then we're going to put the actual lime uh, in, the, in the drink as well. So squeeze that in there. Lovely. I didn't bring my paper towels. That's okay. Uh, so we've got our lime for our sour Krennic uh, character. Uh, lovely, that's in there. Uh, Sevilla, Bale, the best dad in the galaxy. Yeah, he's a pretty great dad, actually. He's a great dad. <coughs> Speaking of alcoholic beverages, we should sell the bright blue uh, Spotchka. Actually, yeah, I would love to try Spotchka. That looks great. There you go. Gin, I'm old. Can't do it anymore. Too many wild times in Germany for gin. I love it. <laughs> Too many... I'm a wimp. Yeah, it is quite strong. It is quite strong. But uh, I mean, how perfect that like there was an alcohol that was the name of a Star Wars character. So I, I couldn't pass that. <laughs> I love that. He is, he's, he's got daddy vibes. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Krennic is sour because Tarkin keeps taking credit for his work. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, that's true. Like you can't. Can't argue with that. Like, he's sour for a reason. Um, now, this is, go with me here, because I've envisaged this, but I feel like this makes sense. So, to make this even more a bit Star Wars y, uh, Commander Krennic, C Commander? What is he? Uh, director. Director Krennic uh, has the cl classic uh, white Imperial uniform, and on his lapel there, he's got his military badges and, you know, his little selection of, you know, his achievements and he's got a row of blue and a row of red now to represent against his white imperial uniform oh dropping blueberries all over the place uh we've got we've got some blueberries and we've got some strawberries to to represent his little military lapel he's got shown there to make it a i'm kind of trying to tie the character into a little bit more into this so i'm going to add a couple of scoops of those into the beverage 
Here we go. To kind of show his military power. Yeah, he's sour for a reason. I mean, that scene was rough. Like, I don't like Krennic because, you know, he's, like, evil, I guess. But, uh, you know, you can understand why. Tarkin's, Tarkin's a bigger asshole. Re you know, excuse the language, but come on. I, Jeez. Like, that's a good villain when you really don't like him. I think that what's make what makes a good villain if, if everyone hates him. But, yeah, not a fan of Tarkin. <coughs> Out there. Um, all right. Next up, we're going to add the tonic part of it. Welcome, Joel. Joel's here in the chats. Give him a hello. I hope so. I hope so. Speaking of. Whoa, ooh, is that my fall? Hopefully not. Speaking of, here is the new Cassian Andor, which was that uh, little label there, limited edition from uh, C. Uh, uh, San Diego Comic Con, I believe this came out of from uh but this is the new cassian he's got his little outfit on there um from from the andor series so it's not the rogue one it's the andor one. Oh, i've got the old packaging though old um logo but uh that's yeah that's his the new cassian but yeah i agree julia i hope they come up with a whole line of them whole line looking good thank you lachlan lachlan was serving as my moderator today as well so that's my brother give him a shout hello He's doing a great job on uh, making sure everything's in check and in line for the production today. So we're going to add our tonic. Ooh, that is satisfying. Ooh, lovely. There we go. We've got our gin and chronic. Number one. Let's get the action cam looking at number two. And our gin and chronic number two. I don't know if you can hear the fizz, but it's really satisfying. Hey, there we go. Top that one up as well to finish off our Star Wars cocktails. Beautiful again. The the blueberries and the and the strawberries representing the, the little military lapel. Uh, does that have an official name? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? He's got the you know, and the imperial uniforms and got the lapel, little lapel thing there. Where have I put that? There we go. There we go. There we go. Rick, what are you excited for? I'm excited to hear the score. Actually, that's a good point. Star Wars scores, very iconic. <clears throat> um, uh, Brutel is brilliant and will feel so different and fresh, I hope. I think so. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Partisan in here. <laughs> I love it. Welcome. Given, given Lachlan a hello. Thank you, Julie. There we go. You you usually drink whiskey and avoid clear, but that looks really good. Thank you. Look at this. The gin and chronic. How good is that looking? A uh, bit of the sourness of Krennic's character in uh, with the lime, and then we got the red and blue for his military lapel. I feel like I've created something here. Watch out. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'm going to make the next cook, Star Wars cookbook. <clears throat> Let's get uh, – well, I feel like we've got to have a taste test, right? Taste test? Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty refreshing. The The strawberries make it uh, a little bit sweet, so it's kind of, kind of nice against the sourness of the lime. Oh, that is so soothing to have, actually. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to just drink out of – all right, let's put that aside. Let's have a bit of a chat before we get on to the next uh, section of the show. Let me enjoy this gin and chronic uh, before we get moving on. <clears throat> oh, I love this. I love this. No way. Thank you so much, Julie. I, I, to this day, I don't know which way to pronounce her name. Reva? Reva? I think it's Reva. Do they say Reva on the show? Reva. Reva? There we go. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I recommend it. I mean, honestly, you could actually make this non-alcoholic, a gin and chronic. Um, what do they call it? A virgin gin and chronic. Uh, so just don't put the gin in. You could just have the lime uh, and you could have the, the strawberries and the blueberries, a little bit of sweetness and a bit of tonic water. Just make it without the alcohol as well. It's still summer uh, over in the U.S., so. Yeah, make that one. It's delicious. Can can confirm. It's delicious. Craving the blue milk from Galaxy's Edge now. Yeah, actually, no one. Did I try that? I don't think I tried that when I was there. 
Uh, Jeff, what have you got for me? I'm excited to see a Star Wars show that isn't shot in the volume. Oh, this is a good talking point, actually. I love the volume, but uh, by all means, but I'm excited to see what they do with these awesome locations. Absolutely. I think there's something about Star Wars locations, like physical locations, that was just always so iconic. Um, you know, obviously, you know, they open <clears throat> well, they open on a ship, but you know, the first kind of planet we see is is Tatooine. And, you know, that being in Tanzania, uh Tanzania? Oh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's not Tanzania, it's the other one. I'm I'm blanking. Um, but uh, you know, we and it's a physical location. I think there's something with a mixture of that, like the practical effects with the kind of mystical and then also like the special effects on top of that, that is just so Star Wars. But I totally agree with you. I like as much as I love The Mandalorian, and I think it fooled us for this first season, the volume. It fooled us then. But uh, but I feel like by the second season we were like, and, and we all learned about the volume, we're like, eh, we can kind of start to tell. And it kind of takes you out of it for a little bit. But it will be really exciting to see, yeah, what they do on locations. And and maybe that adds to the kind of the scale. Because what I've gotten from the from the trailers is just the scale of Andor. It feels like we're going really big places, many places and far in the galaxy, very far in the galaxy. So I, I maybe that's a uh, contributing factor, the fact that they used physical locations and not all the volume. Rick, adjoin, uh, Rick, what's the word? Rick is agreeing with us here. Yes, Jeff, the real locations make it seem bigger and grittier. Yep, totally agree. Oh, all agreeing here. Amazing real sets, practical effects. Yeah, wow. Write that one. Well, I want that on a shirt. I love that. Real sets, practical effects. Incredible, incredible. The volume is difficult to use, and the Mandalorian is used. Better. Yeah, I feel like, you know, you do have to nail it. And I think for those intimate scenes, it does work. But, you know, I think if you're trying to establish it's if you're in a really vast place, like if you want the dunes of you know, Tatooine in the background, you know, I, but it's also, that's quite difficult to go to fly to Africa every time or, the, or some sort of desert uh, every time you need to film a Tanzania. That, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's close. Very close. Every time, yeah, you film something with a big scope. Uh, Rick, the volume was not used well in Obi-Wan as it is in Mando, but Ando looks, Andor looks different. I totally agree. Definitely, uh, yeah, going into Obi-Wan, it was a lot more noticeable. You can really, like, you would it would start a scene and you're like, yep, yeah, we're in the volume here. Like, they're, they're acting this in the volume, which didn't take it away from the experience too much for me. I was pretty locked into like the dialogue and what was happening in the story. Um, but I can understand for maybe some people that was, that was quite, uh, yeah, a bit of a, bit of a downer, bit of a downer, but, um, yeah, I, I think if they, they, yeah, they could maybe find a balance of practical and, and the volume. <clears throat> Julie, I'm excited to see a Star Wars show that goes away from the Jedi. Explan it expands the galaxy to new things. I yeah, I agree. I said this. I was talking to my to my family, to my brothers, and my parents about this the other day. Of, I think this show is going to have a really interesting feel because it's it, yeah, it's away from we're following a Jedi story. As much as I love the Jedi, so it's my favorite thing of Star Wars. I think it's really interesting to get a show where it's not Jedi centric. Yeah, so it's still in the volume. Mm. There you go. So we're full jet in the Batman. There you go. I wouldn't even know that. I wouldn't even know that. Again, yeah, the finding a balance. Finding a balance. Uh, not every director knows how to use it properly. And if they do not know how to use it or manage it, it is better not used at all. I agree. I think maybe that was maybe Tony Gilroy's approach. Maybe he hadn't had any experience in using the volume perhaps and just said hey it's probably easier if i just use a physical location and what i'm used to and they probably went yeah okay uh, i'm sure that was a light summation of what the conversation could have been uh yeah that was a good example yeah the batman i love it i'm just so happy diego luna is working on star wars again he has such an energy about this stuff in interviews absolutely his his zest his zest for the way he talks about this show is so good and it's so just engaging. Like he's like, yeah, he's like, 
even before they ask him a question, he's like, what, yeah, what do you want to know? Like, just, you know, he's so excitable. And I think it, that really, uh, rubs off on the, um, on the fans. Uh, that, that was one thing about Andor that was so different to any other Star Wars show so far is the marketing for this. Did anyone else find this? They just were like, here is everything you need to know around the story of what this show is going to be. Like every day there was some sort of interview excerpt or article or little update of, you know, what's, you know, where they, where they're going, what's happening or something that Tony Gilroy says, um, you know, and we've even got a bunch of trailers and a bunch of, Granted, like, there wasn't, mu- like, much difference between each trailer, but, like, just constantly new little TV spots of Andor, uh, which is really positive, I think, for Star Wars in general. I think, you know, it, it makes it maybe less gatekeepy, hopefully, that where it's kind of we're opening it up to more uh, more fans, more casual fans. You know, Star Wars is for everybody to enjoy. With, I'm very, you know, about that here at the race side, making sure, you know, anyone from any walk, from any perspective can enjoy Star Wars. And I... I, I hope that this kind of marketing campaign they've been on opens those doors for a lot of people. Uh, hello there. Hello there. There you go. I'm really excited for more center scenes. It's quite unfortunate. I see completely scrapped politics. The fear of backlash from people had is, yeah, that was it. it's, it's an interesting balance. They kind of had trying to figure out, you know, where to go with things, but uh, that, that's very Star Wars, I think, to kind of be quite reactive to what fans think. Which is good, good and bad, good and bad. But yeah, I agree. Very, we're very excited to see Senate scenes. What's the time? We got fifty minutes. <coughs> I'm just assuming it's dropping right on the hour. So fifty minutes if it drops correctly. Mm. The negotiator, um, Omar. Also, shout out, shout out to you, uh, negotiator. Uh, we saw the Kenobi premiere together, which was awesome. Uh, and and now you're here for the countdown of the Andor premiere. I, I'm real honored that you're here, mate. I, fantastic to have you in the chat. They did a similar thing with Rogue One. I feel like I know I knew so much about that movie before it even came out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like they don't even have to spoil a whole bunch. Like just give us the actors talking about it. Just give us the director talking about how great it is, and even the special look they put on Disney Plus. You could tell it's like they just put all these things out for fans to understand and. Not even fans, but casual fans, people that maybe haven't seen Star Wars for a while, to be like, oh, this is where we are in the timeline. This is what's happening. Um, you know, you know, catch catch them up on everything. And I think that's it has been such a good, such a good play by Star Wars and Lucasfilm. Uh, Rick, in a story that gets away from so many uh, sacred legacy characters, lots more freedom to make drama without the fan outrage. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, actually, I found this with the Boba episodes um i i definitely found this was the same mm. maybe could it could almost be like 15 to 10 minutes before star wars holocron agreeing with this it usually drops a few minutes early, early at least that's how it's worked with everyone Boba. so i i guess i'm gonna have um i'm gonna have the disney plus up on on my other monitor here to be checking when it can be up uh, so we can be here right down to the minute. Uh, and I'll also say as well, as we're all here, uh, we're, I'm going to be doing an immediate reaction debrief straight after. So I, I don't actually know. We did get the run times of the episodes. Um, so pretty much if we just all watch them back to back, uh, I'll go live uh, immediately after when, when I'm finishing them. Uh, and we'll, we'll go live here on the the after show, the post show. Uh, just de- debriefing, debriefing our, you know, initial thoughts and feelings on the show, which is going to be super, super exciting. I'm sure we're going to have a lot to say. Uh, but let's get the Disney Plus up here. Okay. I've got the Disney Plus up. So is everyone doing the same thing where they just keep refreshing it? Uh, it's probably a bit early now, but it's coming very soon. <clears throat> I guess so. One Moth is a legacy character. That's a good point. Oh, yeah, the crucial moment in the formation of the Rebellion. Absolutely, I think so. Okay, so what we're going to do next up is a very interesting thing, uh, and I need everyone's help for this part as well. Uh, Let me just make some room here, and you're going to get started. (laughs) 
So what we're going to be doing next is uh, we've we've made our cocktail. We've got our gin and krennic. Lovely, delicious, fresh. Uh, we've got our gin and krennic. Um, a couple of weeks ago on the race side, on my live show, we've been building up our show in a series I've called the Andor Antics, where every week we do something Andor or Rebellion or Empire related. And a couple of weeks ago, we made our very own... Let me show you. Death Star. There we go. This is handmade, not screen accurate, <laughs> not screen accurate. Death Star. It is made out of paper mache. Uh, let dro drop a comment in the in the live chat if you were here live watching me do this. Um, but it's fully dry now. Um, it's just the holder. It's fully dry now, um, which is awesome. So the paint's all good. The glue's all good. Uh, we've got the line, and we drew the, the the center. But I feel like it's missing something. I feel like it's missing something. Uh, so let's go, let's whack this up on here. We're going to be painting. I, I say painting. I more mean just decorating the Death Star. Uh, so let me know if, you know, some tips, how, how could I best decorate this? Um, what I've got going on here, I'm going to, I'm, I said, as by, what I mean by decorate is I'm going to add some of the, the lines and kind of boxes and little d details to kind of show a bit more Death Stariness to it um but yeah let me know in the chat if, if you were here live watching this when i made it made it by hand very messy show it was a very messy show oh no oh there what there would have been there would have been <laughs> rick was here rick was here amazing i witnessed the firepower of this fully operational paper mache battle station you you were you were here rick amazing it was beth Yes, that's the answer. It was Beth. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's going to be 4 a.m. I know. It's like crazy how late this is going to go. Like, perfect timing for here. I, ca I can't, like, uh, I feel bad. I feel bad for breaking about it. But it's like, yeah, it, it Andor's going to premiere at 5 p.m. in Australia. Only finishing at 7 p.m. <clears throat> roughly. All right. <laughs> action cam shined I know right alright so what I'm thinking <sighs> I don't know what I'm thinking actually I I just was like here's hey Hannah have a marker and the Death Star let's make some details I think I'm just going to kind of freehand it along the way but give, give me some pointers of how I could best kind of add some details to this <laughs> okay how do we do this? I can't even. I want to show you what I'm doing. Oh, I, that's why I've got action cam. Action cam can show you. That's okay. All right. So I'm thinking of just doing like kind of random boxes around. See how that works for us. Um, let's just give it a go. Because it's, you know, there's so much going on on the surface of the Death Star that you don't really notice. Like, you know. It's not it's not meant to be super straight. So let's just I'm gonna go on with some boxes here. I feel like that's something simple to start with. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. Segments like an orange. We should make it into a uh, a basketball. Okay, doing some lines here. I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna be kind of random with it and just see how we go. <laughs> this is already really funny. <laughs> hand drawn greeblies. Yeah, pretty much. These are hand, hand drawn greeblies. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I'm doing a bunch of Death Star stuff at the moment, actually. But, um. Yeah, uh, my. my Lock, Locky, my brother, made a fantastic remark yesterday when we we rewatched Rogue One as a family, actually, and that was quite an experience. Having watching Rogue One for the first time with my parents, like it was the first time they saw it, they had great perspective on it. Great perspective. Uh, I put a thread on Twitter on some of the best comments on it live, so make sure you you go over there if you want to see more info on it. But they they had some interesting takes. But my brother made a really funny thought, and I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, that is kind of weird. Um, 
how like at the end there, you know, they're on the Scarif, the Death Star comes and like without a beat, without just a second of thought, uh, Tarkin was like, you know, let's blow it up. There's like a whole vault of like years of Imperial information, critical Imperial information. And he's like, yep, yeah, blow it up. That's fine. They're like, cranks that. That's whatever. Yeah, blow it, blow it up. Blow it up. Which, like, I mean, I, I think I, like, I understand because it's like, otherwise the rebels would get it. But it's like, geez, man, this guy's cutthroat. So intense. Tarkin is one of the best villains, I honestly think. One of the best villains in Star Wars. Okay, I'm just doing like, kind of lots of boxes here. Lots of odd shaped boxes. Yeah, I don't know if you can see. So there, there. I'm just yeah, just kind of doing not neat boxes. I'm gonna do this all the way around. <clears throat> all right, we're all still refreshing. We've got let's let's if if we estimate it's gonna come out ten minutes earlier than the hour. We've got I can't count thirty minutes. Got about thirty minutes to go. Okay. Let's make some, maybe I'm doing too many boxes. Let's make some odd shaped things. There we go. Let's, let's get action cam a little bit higher. There we go. A little bit higher there. Makes you think what other secrets. Actually, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would actually be so cool. I do, I do think though, like in kind of fireworks or firecrackers are illegal in Australia, which I don't, I don't think they are in America. I don't know, um, but they are illegal here, so I, I, I can illegally do it. Um, but uh, I can, I could, I could, I could figure out another way to blow it up. I'm sure. Okay, wow, this is there's so much space. Anyway, I feel like I got to be quicker here. I feel like I got to be quicker. Um. Now, let's talk about, it says streaming tomorrow on Disney Plus. I'm still like, oh, it's, it is tomorrow now. <laughs> uh, Rick, good question here, mate. Uh, did you guys uh, bite into Deepfake Tarkin? I thought he was effective. Uh, he, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. Like, if we compare it, I wasn't a huge fan of the Mandalorian finale of Luke. I feel like he was a little better than that, or quite a bit better. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely bought it. I thought it was he, he did quite well with, with that. Uh, but but let me know in the comments. Do you agree with Rick here? Did you did you buy into it, or did you not? Okay, I'm gonna just do that the whole way along. I think so. <laughs> blow it up. Yes. Oh, you guys really want me to blow this up? Is it that bad? <laughs> You'll need. I yes, I'll need I'll need Han to to smuggle me some over the border. <clears throat> over the border it's, I'm, we're surrounded by water okay I'm going to do bigger shapes here again I don't know how to do this so you can see what I'm doing should I stand up or is that too dramatic so I'm trying to be messy with it I'm not trying to be super neat no the Death Star is kind of messy itself <laughs> oh Gary <laughs> Put a little tie configure on it. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it. Okay. Yeah, Tarkin, Tarkin is such a good villain to me because I hate him so much. I, like, really hate Tarkin, but that I feel like that's a good thing. Okay, reminder... Straight after the show, come back to the channel. It's it's live there, so make sure you um you maybe hit remind me on the uh, 
on the on the YouTube link it's on. But yes, the post show, the after show, live here on the race side. I'm getting so into drawing these shapes. I'm trying to make them bigger. I feel like I'm being too tedious with it. Oh, there we go. Do a big one here. They're kind of, the surface of it is actually kind of making it a little tricky, to be honest. Okay, we're doing our details. <laughs> we're doing our details. This is going well. This is going very well. Most driver thing. Oh, Gary the Stormtrooper. What a legend. What a legend. Uh, but let's talk about something I'm gonna I find really, really interesting. Uh, the the possible cameos, which much uh, there's been a couple of media releases about how there isn't gonna be many uh, cameos, but I don't know. It's Star Wars, it's Lucasfilm. They like their fan service. I, I don't believe Tony Gilroy. I mean, I kind of believe him to an extent where I feel like it's going to be less than the Mando kind of was with the with the cameos, but I'm, I'm sure there'll be some. Uh, so who could be a cameo in Andor? Who do you think could show up that we know? Uh, ba Bail Organa is a pretty – no, that's a pretty confident uh, kind of character to show up to me. Um but uh, one character that's really off the wall. Oh, see, I want to know your off the wall character guesses of who could show up at Andor. Uh, I I definitely think a certain wandering Jedi by the name of Cal Kestis could potentially show up in this show. I really think that's a possibility. Um, you know, he's kind of around. I think he could have some interesting conversations with uh, with Andor about just the state of the galaxy, what they're doing or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just feel like they would have a very cool dialogue. Okay, have a look in here. I'm getting a bit more concise with it. <coughs> this is a good question. The whole series is or, or series. See, oh, let's do the whole si series. I, I agree. Like, yes, they're on the show. Joel, you made a really good point. I, I do agree with this, that. I feel like they're gonna if they're gonna do cameos, it probably be in season two, maybe. Um, so let's just say the whole series. Rick, I hope they don't do many cameos. Um, seeing Morris face and his buddy show up in Rogue One is the worst part of the movie. Wow, worst part of the movie. Be cool, be cool. Uh, man, a meta. There we go. Sly more. Oh yeah, that. That would be cool, actually. That kind of be cool. Ooh, Leia Bobby Brown. Yeah, you know, when was that? That was a good, maybe start of the year. That was rumored that she was in talks to join a Star Wars project. That would be that would be interesting. I don't know if I'm for that, to be honest. I don't know if I'm, like, completely behind that idea. Like, she kind of looks like her, but I, I don't know. I, I'm, like, I'm more for um, Vivian Lyra Blair, like, growing up first and then and then coming back to Star Wars, growing up a, a little bit um, and doing more stuff. Okay, how we looking? I'm doing some details around the, around the, what's it called? I don't even know what it's called. The cent main <laughs> gun part? I don't know. What, 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 does this have an official name? Someone correct me here. But uh, could we get Leia in Andor? I don't, ooh. Like, you know what? Like, it is around her time. She's, like, with the Rebellion at, by this point. Oh, j you know, just kind of getting into things, I think. But, um, yeah. It's interesting who we could potentially see. Potentially. We see Moff Gideon. Could we see uh, Ghost Crew? That's another one. Ghost Crew. Could we see a Sabine? Could we see an Ahsoka in this show? Fulcrum. Come on. Off the wall. Ahsoka Hera. Uh, the show runs almost concurrent with Rebels. So I love that. Yeah. So that's your off the wall one. Uh, Broken or Emphis Nest. That was a good one. I like those. I, Broken is, I feel like that's a really plausible one. Uh, Soon to Fell. For the Empire. Quinlan Voss. 
I feel like he could even get a mention. Oh, maybe we could see him actually. I don't know. I don't know. But um, who is the f who who is that? Soon to have fell. Do I know that person? Remind me of who that is. You're testing my my empire knowledge there. If, if they're empirical. <clears throat> I actually think they could do a uh, a B story with Jin and Saw in season two somehow. Actually, that's a good point. You know, the they have that line in Rogue One where you know they they meet each other again, and he's like, you know, I like I like helped you. I like was making sure you're safe, and she's like, you abandoned me. Like they could do that whole scene. They could do that whole story there. You know, what, I'm gonna make the center trench line a little thicker. I, you know, I'm really sad that it is in the time that it is because, yeah, I, I don't know if we can see Jin. That's actually a plausible thought, Rick. I think I think that would be a cool way to add Jin into it. If there was, yeah, like a shadowing B story going on with Jin and Saw. Because obviously, you know, Saw is going to be in it. We know that much. <coughs> okay. Let's, 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 someone refreshing? Who's refreshing? We're 30 minutes away or 20 minutes away. Let's give it another refresh. Not out yet. Because maybe there's a d difference between Australian release and American release. Let's see who gets it first. Or wherever you're from. Okay, making this trench a little thicker. It's a little easier to see. I like how they didn't make Saw like a cameo, but they like showed him in the trailer. Because it's like, he's not a cameo. He's in like every Star Wars thing ever. He's not a cameo anymore. He's like he's like a re, he's a recurring um, he's a recurring character. He's in he's in every show. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you, you've given me a deep EU cut. There you go. Uh, and I'll film at the same time as Kenobi Book of Boba. Maybe they ship some of the characters off to the UK for a quick cameo. Yeah. I did, yeah. See, I think that could have definitely happened uh, with Bale or Ghana. I definitely think we could see him. Jimmy Smith's great actor, great guy, very fun-loving guy. <laughs> okay, I've got the hang of doing these details now. I'm doing. I'm happy with how this is going. So this is what I mean. I yeah, I didn't want to. Super, um, kind of, <clears throat> um, what's the word? D d like, neat. I, like the death star is kind of messy. It kind of looks chaotic. <coughs> Some bounty hunters. Ooh, what about Enbo? I loved Enbo from Clone Wars. He was a legend. Hondo. Quizzy Hondo in Andor? That'd be hilarious. I feel I feel like that would be a really nice cameo. Like, no one could be super mad at Hondo showing up, right? Right? Let me get the hang of this. Is that a Star Wars quote? What is it? That sounds familiar to me. I'm getting the hang of this. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Is that, that's, 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 is that Ray? Am I th dreaming of that? We know R2 and 3PO are hanging out with the Rebels, so it'd be cool to see them briefly. Yeah. That would be cool to see them. Okay. Let's keep rolling here. Getting the details in on the Death Star. I'm so excited. I can't believe we're about to get Andor. Guys, we're about to get Andor. Like, oh my god. Thank you so much, AJ. I'm putting, 
It's, I'm trying to get Death Starry. How are we looking? It's a, it's, it's a little bit Death Starry. It's very, it's like an abstract Death Star. I think we're going for. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy with it. It's very, it's very satisfying. It's actually very therapeutic to do. I'd recommend if anyone wants to put details on a Death Star. That's a, that's a, that's a. This is very satisfying. Okay, and up here. Mm -hmm. Hunting some protagonists. Yeah, I you know maybe the empires obviously maybe got the the whiff of there's some rebellion action happening, and maybe they've they've sent out some people to hunt some rebellions. Rebe no, to hunt some rebels. There we go. Okay. I'm trying to get this whole top section done. The Beth Star. <laughs> oh, this is the one of the best in jokes ever. I love that. Oh, Anna, you crack me up. I keep calling you Anna. I don't know. What's with my pronunciations? Reva, Reva, Anna. Heck yeah. Okay. We're almost, we're almost on the top section here, the Death Star. Now, to keep our minds fresh with what Andor is going to be, we're going to watch the trailer again all together here in a second. Uh, so that's always fun. The last time I used this is because I had a technical malfunction the other day on the live show. But today we're going to watch it for actual enjoyment because it's, it's a great trailer. Let's, let's not lie here. It's, it's a fantastic trailer. So... Ooh, let me just finish this top part and then we'll have a look at the trailer together. Ooh. Goodness gracious. Would anyone uh, want to see characters from Solo Shop? Oh, that'd be interesting. I don't know if, like, Lucasfilm is clearly not too confident in doing anything with Solo, but that would be so interesting. If that was to to be the case, um, I to be honest, sounds so. I I can't remember like any of the characters' names. I remember all the characters, but none of their names. Is that bad? But that would be super interesting. What an interesting thought. Hey, alrighty, woo, alrighty. So we got the top half done. So lots of boxes, lots of lines. Again, I feel like this is a very like this is an abstract Death Star. Abstract it stuff. All right, let's have a quick little break. But we're well, not break because we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna watch it with you. But let's watch along of the 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 first and the 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 longest of Andor trailers. Let's watch it together, just so it's fresh in our minds because it's coming right up very very soon. We've got probably about twenty minutes to go. Twenty minutes to go, and then we're going to get Andor. So let's have a look at this trailer all together. One last time. To steal from the Empire? To just walk in like you belong? They're so proud of themselves, so fat and satisfied, they can't imagine that someone like me would ever get inside their house. Cassian Ander, the Empire is choking us so slowly, we're starting not to notice. What I'm asking is this, wouldn't you rather give it all to something real? All the heroes I can get. For the greater good. Call it what you will. Let's call it war. There's fermenting out there, son. Pockets of fermenting. 
You're in my net. Are you a fish? Or are you a thief? You're slipping. <laughs> I'm not slipping. I've just been hiding for too long. As long as everyone thinks I'm an irritation, there's a good chance they'll miss what I'm really doing. What are you really doing? This is what revolution looks like. I'm tired of losing. good is that trailer how good it is top tier what top three of my favorite trailers amazing and uh and Christian, you you say something here i agree love the music for this one so epic very grand very just dramatic sounding very all or nothing such a fantastic trailer one of my favorites uh welcome to the race side if you're just tuning in uh we just had a quick little break watching the trailer for the last time before we see it with our own eyes, the actual show, the actual premiere of Andor. Amazing, amazing stuff. We are me. Oh, I don't know what to say. Five, within 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes until it's dropping. I'm like, hopefully like everyone else, I'm refreshing like crazy on the Disney Plus page for whenever this could be on live it's so scary and i don't know if there's a bit of a difference between australia um and the u.s or north america we'll, we'll find out we'll find out chills very much agree rick uh the dream of a citizen in a third world country yeah it's it's you know there's something about this story of andor which i i hope it delves into uh which is that of you know the journey or experience of a refugee you know it's, it's something to me anyway i i think i have not seen on screen a whole bunch and uh i i hope it kind of really goes into that um you know th yeah that's when you lose everything how wh where does he go from there where does he go from there uh so currently we, we are still continuing with our finishing of the details of the death star gonna go on the bottom now uh and then hopefully we'll we'll have it we'll have it <laughs> I'm looking at photos from Celebration. I just remembered when we got the teaser and I'm so emotional now we're here, right? Like that was so amazing at Celebration when Diego came out and, on on the, uh, you know, on the stage and he came out and welcomed Andor and talked a little bit about it. And Genevieve O'Reilly was there and she was awesome too. Um, but it's so crazy to think that, you know, that's where we were and, and now we're here. Even with, um, I said this at the start of the show, you know, when we first got that pushback of time and and you know we we it was they're saying it was going to be august 31st but now it's september 21 i was i wasn't upset but i was just like oh we have to wait longer but um you know the wait is over we're here we're here now we're gonna put on these final details of the death star and then we're gonna hopefully watch it uh another reminder as well uh we're gonna go offline watching it um, but come straight back when you finish watching all three episodes here. I've got an after show, which is in a separate, <coughs> excuse me, separate video on the channel of the and or after show, which you want to join. I want to hear all your thoughts. It's pretty much going to be me sitting here waiting to hear all your thoughts about it. So make sure you're there. Um, and, you know, tell me your feelings, your emotions watching it, because I'm sure we're going to have many. I'm very... I'm very emotional when it comes to Star Wars. I don't know about you guys, but it's like if anything remotely nice or wholesome happens, I get so emotional. So emotional. So I, I'm sure I, I don't think I'll cry uh, in these first three episodes. But uh, you, know, you never know. It could, be, it could be that wholesome. It could be that good and beautiful. Uh, Got to say, Diego Luna is one handsome fella. Yeah, great. Great guy to lead a show. What a handsome guy. He's he's. And he's got a great personality too. Like his personality is amazing and he looks handsome. He's fantastic. Uh, it's going to connect very strongly with what's going on here in the world right now. Absolutely. And I, I think it's something that's like a testament to 
um, st style of storytelling is at its best when it mirrors what's happening in the world. So one thing that's awesome about these kinds of stories is, is how, yeah, how people can connect to them. And that's when Star Wars thrives, when people go, yeah, I really connect to this character um, and, and their story or their journey. You know, in my experience, like I was, I'm pretty much the exact same age as Ahsoka when, when Clone Wars was coming out. I was pretty much the same age as Ahsoka. So when, you know, when she was like 14, 15, 16, you know, I was going up to the same ages. And so, you know, I really personally connected to Ahsoka. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to find that with Andor and, you know, and other characters within the show. I think there's going to be a lot of people that can connect to these characters. And that's why there is this importance for diversity. You know, it's, you know, on screen it's important, but it's it's important because people need to connect to these characters. If it's just these stock standard people that all look the same, not everyone can connect to that. So it's really amazing to have this fantastic show kind of show a different start side of Star Wars and not just the, you know, the clean inside of the Tainted Four, but, you know, also so many different gritty, uh, you know, we keep using that word gritty facets of the show. <coughs> Goodness. Also, if, if, also a reminder, this week I was, I was going to do a Rogue One watch along, but I did have to cancel it because I fell sick, but uh, it's still a little bit with me. So please excuse the cough as well. Try and stay up. Yes, I know. It's like middle of the night. After show is going to be mid snack mang in the middle of the night. So that's okay. If you're going to have to go to sleep, understand that as well. Uh, but if you are awake and maybe it's just going to be a bit overwhelming to absorb all the information and you need to debrief it, come back here and we can debrief it together. But absolutely, it is middle of the night, so I totally understand as well. All right, we're almost done here. I'm trying to do it quickly because I want to just keep refreshing this page. We're at 15 minutes out, so we're in quite the, the – we're in the splash zone here. We're in the splash zone. Keep uh, keep refreshing that page. I'm going to keep refreshing mine as well. Oof. Mine took a second to refresh then, which I freaked out. That's amazing. A fellow Mexican in Star Wars project, something I didn't think it would happen. Yeah, see, like, just that is amazing. It's having that connection. It's, you know, that's something you didn't think was possible. And then, you know, now, now here is Diego doing, you know, a, a world tour of, you know, getting all this, you know, press coverage and, and promoting this show. And I'm pretty sure he's just done – it was either yesterday or today or within the last, like, 48 hours, he, he's done a um, premiere of it in Mexico City, which I think was awesome. That's just so wholesome. That's what Star Wars needs. Uh, back to, you know, you know what we are just saying of, of the representation and, and people of, you know, different countries, different languages, different cultures, all connecting over the one thing, which is Star Wars, I think is a beautiful thing. I'm trying to finish this so quickly because I'm so nervous that it's going to come out while I'm detailing a Death Star. Oh, my gosh. It's going to happen. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good on our Death Star. Okay. There we go. There we go. All done. Where's our shooter? There we go. There's my Death Star. We'll put that. Into the side there. Four minutes. You th yeah, we think when four minutes, let's say, <coughs> if it's going to be in with, uh, yeah, is it going to be coming out 10 minutes before? 10 minutes before? Click the end or banner, see if it, the episode's up there. But there's an update uh, until the hour, but the episodes are usually up. Yes, I'm on the end or screen. We're on the end or screen, but I'm still hitting the refresh so not the banner because yeah i agree i think the banner will take a bit longer to um to refresh but we're just going to refresh the screen here this is it guys wow we waited all these months and weeks for andor here it is put your final thoughts your final predictions your final wishes of what you got what, what, what we are going to get from this show uh put them in the con comments because we've only got a mere couple minutes before it's here this is going to be amazing uh, my reaction 
my filmed reaction of each of these episodes are going to be up on the channel when I finish editing them, especially, uh, essentially. So in a couple of hours time as well after the after show. So again, remember, we've got the after show live here straight after we finish watching it. We're going to be coming here. I've said approximately 215. I, I, that's, that's kind of a bit of padded room for, uh, you know, getting some food, getting something, getting a snack. Uh, and then we'll go live. We'll, we'll have a quick debrief of all of what's happened. Um, and then we'll, we'll, yeah, go to bed, get some sleep afterwards, hopefully. But final thoughts, final comments. This show is going to be so good. I'm ready for it to feel different. I've geared my brain for it to feel different. I, I'm, I'm okay for that. Gonna, I'm okay for it to feel different to normal Star Wars. No, I shouldn't say normal Star Wars, but just other Star Wars. I'm at the point, just uh, happy to see Cassie and Endo show up. Yeah, honestly, like the second he comes to screen, I'm going to be like, he absolutely amazing. I'm going to be like, <laughs> so thrilled. Yes, do your final bathroom break, but enjoy everyone. Thank thank you so much, Anna, for coming on for the trivia. You did so fantastically. Uh, go check her out at Tales from the Beyond the Galaxy podcast. They're, they're doing great stuff over there. And they had the first show last week and the, uh, the second show is just tomorrow. Uh, just happy to see Star Wars, right? Same. Like, I'm, you know, I could hate it. I definitely won't hate the show. But it's like, I'm just happy we've got new Star Wars. This is amazing. Bring the hype. Yes, let's do it. Oh, goodness gracious. That You you will only get a couple hours sleep, but hopefully hopefully a little more than that. You just got to raise the bar. Yes. Just want a great show that has action and that will probably make us cry. Hope, hopefully. It's always a good cry when we cry for Star Wars. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sevilla. This is my pleasure. This is because as a, as a child, I always wished I had a group of friends that I could uh, hype up and revel over Star Wars with. So this is why I've made this channel. So it's my pleasure being here. This is going to be awesome to uh, debrief uh, with you all afterwards. But this has been an awesome almost two hours with you guys. We've had such a good time uh, making cocktails. I'm going through my gin and Krennic here. We've, we've finished, put the details on the Death Star. Look at that Death Star there. Uh, we've got the Death Star and then we had amazing trivia. Bailey Pollard coming in. I really hope there's lightsabers, even though I think there might not. I agree with you. I'm like, I think there might not be. <coughs> but I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say no. Quinlan Voss, Cal Kestis, who could show up here? Ahsoka even, you know, you never know. Okay, keep hitting that refresh. Keep hitting that refresh. We are almost, we're, we're 10 minutes away from the hour, which is typically, and it's live. It's live, guys. So we'll end the stream here. It's live in Australia. Actually, I'll let me just confirm that it's in the, in the US, but it's live here in Australia. So we'll end in just a moment. Episodes are up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. All the love. Thank you for the fun conversation. See you in a couple hours. See you for the debrief. So come back here to the channel, channel The Ray Side, for an after show debrief. It's going to be fantastic. Enjoy the show, guys. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, my God. Let's go enjoy Andor. I'll see you guys very, very soon post Andor. <laughs>